He had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of Elohim. Stop right there. He said, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, he did what? He sat down on the right hand of Elohim. So, when we start looking at this, quite naturally, the first time, I mean, this, this, this stuff should be fundamental right here. This should be Hebrew 101. We should automatically see what's going on right here. We should see a difference between one covenant and a difference between that covenant and another covenant. Because he, this said that sacrifice was done for what? One time, once, and it was good for what? Forever. And you know what he said? He what, took away our sins? He didn't, only, he didn't just cover our sins. It took away our sins. Uh -oh. go, go ahead, Warren. Verse 13. From henceforth expecting till, or until, his enemies did made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified or set apart. Wherefore the set apart Ruach also is a witness to us, for after that he has said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith Elohim. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Say that there's no more what? There is no, no more offering, offering for, for sin. sin. He said, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says, um, you know, he said, I will what? I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. He said, I'm going to put my laws where? In their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Where are they at right now? On the table. Are they on the table of stone? Mm -hmm. He said, the covenant that I make with them in those days, I'm going to what? I'm going to put them where? In their hearts and in their minds, I will write them. That's what's wrong with the next of Yahshua today. They're not in their hearts and they're not written in their minds. Because when that takes place, guess what's going to happen? Walking upright and set apart will be second nature. Mm -hmm. It's natural. It'll be, it's, it's natural. And so this is what Yahuwah is trying to show. This is what he comes to do. This is why we must never forget what he did for us at Calvary. We must always emphasize it because when, we, when you try to hold on to um, a lot of these things, you only put yourself in bondage, and not only that, you disqualify what he did. You belittle and make little of what he actually did for you. And I keep telling you, we don't understand the importance, and we don't see what he really did when he gave his life for us. He made you heirs again. He transferred you back into a union with himself. He gave you life. Because didn't we not die? Mm -hmm. To be separated from you was to be what? Be to, be, to be dead. He allowed us to enter back into covenant relationship with him. That's very important. Because when you want to incur covenant relationship with him, you are no different from the nation. <coughs> Outside of your rule, you, you're no different than a Gentile or heathen. You're no different from the nation. Uh, go ahead, Morgan. Verse we know, 16? 19. 19. Okay. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the set apart by the blood of the Mashiach, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated or made new for us, through the veil, that is to say, 
his flesh. And have you an high priest over the house of Elohim? Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but, ex but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if, you, for if we sit willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Again, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for a judgment and a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much more sore punishment suppose you shall he be thought worthy who have trodden under the foot the son of Elohim and have counted the blood of the Mashiach of the covenant which he was sanctified or set apart, the set apart thing, and have done despite unto the rock of grace. For we know him, and have said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith Yahuwah. And again, Yahuwah would judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. That's good right there, Mark. Now y'all see when he's speaking right here, he's speaking to his people. He said, of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden under the foot, under foot the son of Elohim. How do you trodden under the um, foot of the son of Elohim? Unbelief. Uh, uh, unbelief. The whole purpose of the last one was about what? What is, what is the focal point of this whole uh, scripture we've been reading? Is it not faith in Mashiach? Mm -hmm. You notice there's a contrast between the law and faith. So you know if the book of the covenant is a covenant, uh, is a uh, 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 promise is faith based to be under that covenant, you have to believe in Mashiach. Then he said, what about uh, being Abraham, what, seed? Mm -hmm. By faith you heirs and Abraham seed. Faith in the Mashiach. So when we want to put sacrifice and put all these other things and place it above the actual work that Hamashiach did, this is not here you trod under your feet, the uh, son of Elohim. You make what? Live out of what he has done. You make little out of what he has done. Okay, let's go over to um, um, let's go back over to Genesis uh, the seventeenth chapter, Bereshit seventeen, starting at verse one. And, and what we're that's yeah. what Paul uh, or Shaul had a problem with the um, with the um, with the Galatians. Exactly. Because what they were doing now was that um, they had tried again the blood of Mashiach by going back into the works. And he said, who has um, bewitched you, O foolish Galatians, after having the understanding that it is now a faith. Now someone now has come along exactly. and said, let's you know, you need to go back to the works where you're not justified by the works. So um, again, just like you said, the friend of yours that you know, um, going, wanting to go back into the works. Go of back the into law, the works of God. You try again. You know, um, the blood of Mashiach under your foot. And that's why we as a people, we have to be very careful because we'll find ourselves ourselves doing the exact same thing. <coughs> and a lot of times you get comfortable with it. Right. Because you're not rightly dividing the words. 
you start emphasizing folks and what they say, you know, you be done put a burden on people and I went, wait a minute now. <laughs> <laughs> And, it, you know, you be so, I'm going to tell you something about this walk here, uh, 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 a Hebraic walk. A lot of times you, got, you don't have the right understanding. Do y'all know most of the time our teaching, most of everything we teach is law, 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 law. Damnation. Exactly. But how, again, damnation, uh -huh. But how often do we point a bring it back to Hamashiach? Mm -hmm. you, you, if you don't believe it, turn on YouTube. Just about every Israelite group, Israelite group, what do they, uh, they focus on? Law, 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 law. You hear very little about Hamashiach. But you notice when we get through, um, come let me tell you something what I love about Apostle Shaul. When you understand what has taken place and what's going on, his letters are not hard to understand at all. You realize he's battling something, the same thing we battle today. They call Judaism. Because what was, y'all, we spoke, spoke about it earlier. What was the one thing that the Pharisees and all of them hung on to? Circumcision. The law of circumcision. Yeah, the law of circumcision and the law. And mainly circumcision. But what did Apostle Shaw, you know, he started talking about what? Circumcision of the heart. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why is he talking about circumcision of the heart? Yeah, because Israel has always had a stony heart. Why is not circumcision? Why wasn't it any good to them anymore? Because they had transgressed. They had transgressed. And you remember when they broke the covenant at what? Sinai? Mm -hmm. After they broke the covenant, when they built the golden calf, what did we say about the whole 40 years they were in um, the wilderness? They didn't circumcise. Mm -hmm. They weren't circumcised. It didn't, it, it didn't do them any good anymore. Circumcision was uh, what? A token to get into the land. It was the token, or what well, I'm talking about when, it, when they first. It, you remember, circumcision was attached to what? The covenant. The Abrahamic covenant. So when he met with them at Sinai, when they broke the covenant, that was a wrap. That's why they didn't circumcise the women. 40 years without circumcision. But as soon as Joshua got ready to take them in, what happened? Let's go ahead and read that. Go, go, you got uh, Bereshit 17 for it? Yes. Um, Start at verse 1. Bereshit, the 17th chapter, verse 1. And when Abram was 99 and, and 9, 99, Yahuwah appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty El Elohim, Walk before me, and be thou perfect, or upright. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and Elohim talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and thou shalt be a father of, it has many nations, Neither shall your name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come out of you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and thy seed after you, in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be an Elohim unto you and to your seed after after you. Stop right there. He said to be an Elohim unto you. Who? To you. Unto you and, seed. and your seed and to your seed afterwards. Never when you read this book do you hear you will say I'm the Elohim of all these nations and stuff. He's on the Elohim of who? Israel. Go ahead, Lord. Verse 8. And I will give unto you and to your seed after you the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their Elohim. And Elohim said unto Abram, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore you and your seed after you in their generations. 
This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you, and your seed after you. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Stop right there. He said, Elohim said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore thou and thy seed, you know what he didn't say, shall keep our covenant? He said, Thou shalt keep my covenant. Mm -hmm. You and your seed after the end of their generations. Go ahead, Word. Verse 11. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. Stop right there. He said, You shall circumcise your foreskin, and it shall be what? It shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. Go ahead, Word. Verse 12. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or brought or bought with money of any stranger which is not of your seed. He that is born in your house and he that is born with your money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man-child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul should be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. And, Ab and, and uh, Elohim said unto Abram, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yes, I will bless her, and she, sh and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. And Abram fell upon his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto me that is a hundred years old? And, so, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abram said unto Elohim, O oh, that Ishmael, might live before you. And Elohim said, Sarah, your wife, shall bear a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Yishak, or Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with Isaac for an everlasting covenant, and with Isaac's seed after him. You can stop right there, Martin. So, we see the covenant that stands with Abraham, then with Isaac, then Isaac's seed after him. And he said, circumcision is what? It's a token of that covenant. The covenant of Abraham, the covenant of faith, the covenant of promise. Now, let's go over to <clears throat> Joshua, the fifth chapter, starting at the first verse. Joshua, the fifth chapter, starting at the first verse. Yahushua, the book of Joshua, chapter 5. And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that Yahuwah had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Yasharal until we were passed over, and that their hearts melted, Neither was the Ruach in them any more because of the children of Yasharal. And at that time, Yahuwah said unto Joshua, Make thee sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Stop right there. And that time, the sovereign uh, Yahuwah said unto Joshua, Make thee sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Go ahead, Brian. And Joshua made them sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause of why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt. Stop right there. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. Pay very close attention to this now. 
It said, Joshua made him what? Sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the foreskin. And go, go, go ahead, Martin. Verse, verse 4. Verse 4. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Mizraim or Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness. All the people that came, what? Now say that, read that one more time. That were, uh, all the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness. By the way, after they came out of Egypt, Verse 5, now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed. Something like that. So... Israel went how many years without circumcision? Forty. Forty. Now y'all see, he said all the what came out of Egypt. What happened to them? They died. They died in the wilderness. Now, what did we say at the beginning of this lesson? That the book or the covenant of promise was a marriage what? Ketubah. And y'all remember we did a lesson we talked about how a Hebraic marriage worked. How. The groom leaves the what? House of his father. He finds a bride. Enter into what? An agreement or a bargain with the father for the daughter. Then he returns back into his father's what? House to go prepare a place to bring his wife to be with him. Y'all will find it strange that Israel never uh, made it back to the father's house. She died right in the wilderness. He brought her out, cleaned her up, and did what? And still had to leave her right there in the wilderness. Hey, Mario, that's like shuttlefish for, uh, for the end time, too. It, it, that's exactly what it is. It's a picture for the end, a shadow, uh, a foreshadow for, for the end time. Because did he not say, I'm not going to leave not one of my sons or daughters behind? But what did he tell you what was going to happen after he gathered? What was going to take place in the wilderness? Then he said two thirds. Two thirds is going to be cut off. It's going to be cut off. You can see it every day. How you, how, I mean, uh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Israel is hard headed, stiff neck, and revenge. We, we got, most, let me tell you something. Most of Israel got their own um, plan already laid out. <laughs> they already know how they're going to do things. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, it's very important that you come out and you fellowship, you sit under the word. You can never hear the word enough or too many times. Because of what I keep trying to tell people, just because we're here together right now, that doesn't mean we might not be separated when we get up out of here. Mm -hmm. So you need to have an understanding and get all you can and can all you get. Why you got an opportunity? You know what I'm saying? Right. right. <laughs> because uh, it's going to be very shaky for a lot of people, and you're going to see how the Most High says He's going to cut people off. He's going to cut them off. He's going to cut them off. And some of them will be people that we've been very close to, near and dear. Because let me tell you somebody how it's going to be out there. Y'all often hear me say, if you don't have an on and off switch that you can turn this on and turn it off. Right. And I can tell you one thing. The more I'm around y'all, the stronger I am, the stronger I feel because I can fellowship and I can glean and I can uh, get understanding from my brothers and my sisters. Thank y'all. And uh, it's very important. We don't uh, see the importance of how imperative it is that we be around each other, get much of the word as we can. Because if you, if you don't watch it, if you find yourself now, you can be more comfortable around unbelievers and you can have more fellowship with unbelievers than you do with your own brother and sister. Nine out of ten times, guess what's going to happen? 
You're going to be on your way out the door. Mm -hmm. You're fixing to head out. Because one thing about this, let me tell you something. Uh, I remember when I was in the, uh, in the Christian church, one thing they used to say, and they were so right. You gotta watch it that if I say I have the light and I'm with an unbeliever, only two things gonna happen. Either my light is not gonna shine and I'm gonna end up following the unbeliever, or my light is gonna shine and the unbeliever is gonna have to stop what he's doing and follow me. But oftentimes they're not, guess what? Most time we end up following the unbeliever because we realize we're not as strong as we think we are. It's important to come out of fellowship. I don't think y'all understand how important it is to come out of fellowship. And I don't think anybody work any harder than, I'm not going to say that because y'all work hard, but more reconciled about myself, we worked long hours, uh, about your long hours. But what do y'all find us in every Shabbat? Right here. Y'all don't think our bodies be tired? Y'all don't think we be sleeping? But we're here because we know the importance. And let me tell y'all something. This is a work. You're not just coming sitting up in here. Every, all of this is ministry. And y'all do realize we're going to get paid for what we have done. And according to what we have done. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to have an offering to offer the most high. You want to be able to tell him something, offer him something. Because, you know, uh, we don't understand how important it is that we come out in fellowship. It's important that we come to be together and come to learn. It's no guarantee that we're going to be together when we leave here. So if you're not with your brother and sister, you can be with somebody that halfway know the scriptures. And guess what you're going to do? Because you're not with you, you, uh, your people, guess what? You're going to listen to what you hear. Because that's all you're going to be hearing because you want to hear long enough to get what you need to get. So when we look at this, we see when we read in uh, Genesis, we saw how what? They were circumcised. We saw when, they, when we read in Joshua how he said what? They stopped circumcision for 40 years. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.